good Saturday night everybody welcome back to another video and it can rain all the time so if you know that reference then you guys get to see my dual review including its source material of James O. Barr's The Crow and that's what I'm gonna do tonight <laughs> so this was a graphic novel that started publication in 1981 and went to 2017 but this is a special edition of the classic graphic novel so the crow tells the story of an aging rock musician and he gets brutally murdered with his fiance and he is bought back to life by the powers of a crow so huh. it's a basic revenge thriller and the graphic novel itself goes a little bit more into like the supernatural territory and uh, it's very very well illustrated like especially when they do the flashback scenes and when they go to present day it's all in black and white and this is a really really good story but I'm gonna be talking about the original and its impact and the remake in this video but I just wanted to show off the crow graphic novel and I read this in like two sittings and it definitely resonated with me I mean, it is a very emotional story. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the original 1994 The Crow. And you could call this like another entry in my Film at 94 series, which it is. <laughs> so, this movie adapts the classic graphic novel but it does its own thing so the crow stars brandon lee and this was his last official role now this movie is just linked with tragedy and uh, depression so this takes place on October 30th which is Devil's Night and that's of course the night before Halloween and uh, a group of gangsters gang up on Eric Draven and his fiance to be Shelly the way the original one opens up, you get Shelley clinging on to life, but they find Eric Draven uh, on the concrete after he was shot and he fell out of a window. So right off the bat, you don't get like any uh, story on this couple what this movie does very very well is develop this relationship in flashback form and focuses more on the revenge tale that's what the crow represents so one year later eric draven is resurrected by a crow and 
the crow is his lifeline for immortality before he writes the wrongs of these gangsters. So he just goes on the path of revenge and kills them one by one. Huh. And there are some very iconic scenes in this film that just resonated with me. I mean, there is a scene in the graphic novel that like mirrors one of the most popular scenes in this movie. And that's the pawn shop scene. Huh. I mean, the dude just comes in, guns a blazing. He quotes the Raven. And he basically wants to try and find Shelley's engagement ring because the gangsters pawned it. And he goes up into like the pawn shop owner and he like literally shows him the rings and he says one life for every ring you have huh just thinking about this movie is just giving me chills because <laughs> it is just drowning in gothic atmosphere and tragedy which we all know that Brandon Lee was tragically killed on set by like a misfired prop gun and happened three days before filming wrapped so Brandon Lee was taken way too soon from us and this movie is his legacy. I mean, huh. It Can't Rain All the Time is probably one of the most emotional line deliveries that you're going to hear in this movie. Because it is one of his songs from his band called Hangman's Joke. And he also has like a, a teenage girl that is very close to him and she uh, automatically recognizes him from the dead. And they just try to uh, reconnect with each other. I mean, <laughs> Sarah's mom was kind of like a whore. And uh, Eric, like, showed her the right way to deal with her daughter. Probably one of the most gut-wrenching scenes in this film. And uh, the mother of Sarah just, like, becomes closer with her. There are a lot. Of emotional scenes in this film it almost made me cry a couple times because <laughs> it truly is an emotional story and all the henchmen are so uh, memorable you have top dollar which is basically the main guy you have fun boy you have Tin Tin, you have T Bird, and Grange. I remember every single one of them and their deaths. And this is a very brutal but sad story as well. So, if you haven't seen the original Crow, what are you doing? At least watch it once. And before I go on the original Crow, this soundtrack is goth industrial metal with a little bit of 
grunge flavor. And I know goth industrial metal isn't my thing, but this soundtrack is known to be like one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. It's very iconic. So, what else do I say about the original crew? It's just a classic revenge tale that just like delivers the tragedy and with very little screen time that you see Eric and Shelley you get this relationship the ending to this film delivers probably one of the most beautiful send-offs Buildings burn, people die, but real love is forever. Whew. <laughs> so, upon rewatch of this film, I've seen it at least maybe two or three times in my lifetime. This recent watch, I love this film and I really want to watch it more often so I would give The Crow 1994 this is an A plus movie it's so good and I almost forgot to mention that Ernie Hudson is in here as Albrecht which is basically like a detective helping him out so very good movie but it is a deeply emotional film and those are my thoughts on the original crew and let's move right on to the crow 2024 and right off the bat not the original crew <laughs> so this is dubbed to be like a reimagining of the classic tale and it essentially um, stars Bill Skarsgård as Eric Draven there's FKA Twigs whoever the frick that is she's Shelly and uh Danny Houston is your main villain, but I will definitely get into him. So, this movie has a lot of issues. But do I think it's really that bad? I'll get into that. <laughs> so, what I really like about this film is the mythos behind the crew and whatever happens to him. So, in this reimagining, I should say, every time Eric gets shot, stabbed, or ran over or whatever, he feels that pain. So, there's like a, a car chase and like a tunnel and he gets ran over by like a truck. His leg is like nearly broken so he just has to like put it back in the place. And there are some very, very gory deaths in here. But I'll get into that later. The best part about this movie is the opera house scene and that's when you get like most of your carnage candy and that's when Eric Draven or Eric becomes the crew and exacts his revenge so that's literally all that I can say about like the positivity on this film and this film just it's kind of like a dull reimagining 
of the classic story. For one, it takes 40 minutes to develop this couple that has no relationship and once they finally do die, you feel nothing. So, not to mention the way they both die is not at all violent. They just get suffocated. Whereas in the original, they both got shot and Shelley got raped and assaulted. None of that is in here. It's just suffocation. Kind of a lame way to go, huh? But, uh, that's the first part of this movie. The second part of this movie is Eric going in between, like, this limbo where he just meets, like, this stranger that tells him the powers of the crew. So, he goes back into, like, the real world and he actually acts like a puss and he doesn't, like, really want to exact revenge, which is a terrible idea because this is a revenge thriller. An hour and 15 minutes in, you finally get to see the crow and the action. That's when this movie gets better, but you have to, like, suffer through, like, 75 minutes of just pure nonsense. Now, when he is the crow, I dig this movie, but the previous half is just unwatchable to me. So, this is an okay film, but it's not good. <laughs> is it terrible like people are saying it is? No, but you're not going to get that uh, charm from the original in this film. So, go into this maybe optimistic, but I just went in for curiosity. So, give, oh, before I even go, I forgot to like talk about like the villain here. So, Danny Houston is Vincent Rogue. I actually remembered his name. And, uh, he's basically like this generic supernatural villain that, like, manipulates people by, uh, whispering in their ear. So, Rogue manipulates Shelly into stabbing one of her friends. And, uh, there's a video that floats around the internet and that's how like this whole thing starts off once you know the reveal then it's pretty obvious why they're after her why they don't flee Detroit or where, wherever this is taking place in is beyond me because there's a lot of logic issues there if bad people are after you, why don't you just get out of Dodge? <laughs> but, very forgettable villain, and Danny Houston, I haven't seen him in many villainous roles. I mean, I can think of 30 Days of Night and American Horror Story Coven. He is a very very well put together villain in both of those mediums. But in here, he's very generic and kind of boring. So, yeah. But overall, I would give the remake of The Crow 
and the fifth entry in this series. There's the poster. <laughs> I would have to probably give this like a D plus. Now, it's not outright terrible, but when you get to like the crow part of this film, it's watchable. But at that point, it's way too late. And not to mention how Brandon Lee looks in the original compared to Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, not really good. I'll put uh, two pictures right here. But I was just thinking about this too. <laughs> Bill Skarsgård looks like the Hot Topic Joker from Suicide Squad. Yeah, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, yeah. Those are my thoughts on the original Crow and its remake and a little bit of the graphic novel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and probably tomorrow I'll give you guys a dual review of Blink Twice and Strange Darling. I saw those two today and I like one but I do not like another one into that tomorrow. But otherwise, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios. Peace. And like I said, buildings burn, people die, real love is forever. Good night.